<laughs> that was a lot of fun. It was On this fun. meeting to order, this is the Committee of the Whole, July 12th. Um, roll call. We have several councillors not here. Councilor De La Cruz, Councilor Watson, and Councilor Perizzotti. Not here. Everybody else is here. Uh, any calendar and or communications? Anybody? Calendar things? I have a list. Okay. But I'll just turn it in. I went to a lot of the submarine. Wait, and then, and I, okay. All right. Do you want to talk about those? Um, well, you, I think traditionally we do that on the, um, the regular. Regular yeah. me. But if there's something that you wanted to get out for sure, like. No, I can wait. Okay. Uh, would someone like to move, is there minutes to approve? Yes. Would like to move the minutes? So moved. Second. There's a motion by Councilor Nall, the second by Councilor Antipas on the minutes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? That passes six to zero to zero. Is there any uh, unfinished business? Anybody? Okay. Moving on to new business, our first item is 2016-0181, market analysis presentation. I believe John Reiner and Paige Bronk are here to to wow us. We just got a uh, we just got the the handout. Good evening, uh, John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development, and with me tonight is Paige Bronk, uh, Community Economic Development Manager. I certainly don't want to disappoint. I don't know how much we're going to wow you tonight because we weren't actually planning on doing the presentation tonight. We're okay. going to do that at the next council of the whole meeting. But what we wanted to do was give everyone tonight a copy of the market analysis and kind of point out a few of the quick key sections that we wanted you to look at. So when we do give that presentation, you have a little bit more of the, the meat of the background and we can have a little bit more of a conversation about the implementation of the market analysis and what the results of that really mean. So there's a very brief cover memo on that market analysis. Again, this was an effort to, that the town undertook, not under any state or federal mandate, but something that we wanted to look at to say, what are the needs of Groton? Everybody can say, hey, we want a Whole food, or we want a Trader Joe's, but if the market is not asking for that, that's not what we're going to get. So when we start doing our planning or our economic development outreach and all of our plans, we know what is the market and what are the needs in Groton. If you look at that market analysis, and uh, for others not at the meeting tonight, it is on the town's webpage, on the planning and development website. The first really 39 pages of that document are key, and they're broken into two sections. The first pages 1 through 19, the executive summary, that really gets into the meat of the findings, what, do, what are the needs in Groton, and then pages 20 through 39 really get into the implementation and the action steps. So how are we going to make these things happen in the future? What I'd ask um, for the council to look at and think about as we move forward on this and over the course of the next couple of weeks, you know, your little bit of homework that we wanted to give you was think about when you're reading this, what are some of our challenges, our opportunities that we have within Groton, and what are your thoughts on these recommendations? Uh, think about, you know, the Route 1 corridor, some of our industrial land in town. What can we do moving forward? to help make Groton a better place, to help grow that grand list and get more business in town. Some of these action items in there, you gave us uh, funding this in this current fiscal year to implement some of these. So we've already budgeted for some of these. And this action steps implementation matrix, it's not just this year, it's gonna be many years. So those are the things, uh, when you look at these, again, First 39 pages, 1 through 19, more the executive summary, 20 through 39 are the action steps. And it's, this doesn't read like your typical planning document, uh, not that uh, planning documents aren't cool and fun, but this is, I think, really interesting from an economic development standpoint. What do we need to do? Uh, happy to answer any questions on any of that. Otherwise, uh, we want to keep you waiting for this presentation on the 26th. So. Anybody have any questions right now? I'm Please. sure I will after I read it. Okay. I just want to make a comment. That was a great article the other day in the paper about all the new businesses going downtown Mystic. It's a direct reflection, I think, of the good work you guys are doing. 
things. Yeah. No, Streamlining things those applications? Trying to one step at a time. Yeah, Paige. Uh, just in terms of format, um, as John mentioned, the executive summary is actually a great executive summary that'll really highlight the key points. And we pulled out a few that you'll see in the bullets. And you may have heard of a few of them all, all along. But um, I think we not only wanted to know some of the challenges within Groton, but some of the opportunities. So you'll find often within that executive summary, they'll provide kind of um, an offset. They'll show, here's a challenge, but with it, they'll also provide you the opportunity. So what do you do about it? How do you take it to that next level? And they also try to incorporate that in some of the action steps, which are at the tail end of that executive summary. So I would encourage you to kind of look at that, compare and contrast, um, you know, two sides of a coin, so to speak, where there's an issue sometimes there really is something that, that would provide us a good future in Groton. Thank you, Paige. Well, we have some homework, I guess, to read. And, um, thank you very much. Are you guys staying for the sale or lease of town-owned access property? The next want two. Want to just jump? Is the it next Mystic two Education Brownfield grant them as well? Or? Yes. Okay. So we'll just keep going. Uh, next on it is 2016-0183, the Mystic Education Center Brownfield grant. Uh, I'm going to handle that one. You have a referral memo before you dealing with this. Um, the reuse of properties within Groton, um, of public properties, that would include both municipal and state, is actually a, a great economic development driver. Uh, I know the town is very interested in growing their grand list. And that is one of the ways that we can do it and it focus on some of these key properties such as the Mystic Oral School. Uh, both the town and the state realize that. Um, they don't want properties sitting there idle that aren't generating any revenue at all. So this particular parcel has been an interest of ours for a number of years as you well know and but also the state. Uh, wants to do something with it. It's a large piece of property, um, well over 55 acres, actually several parcels in that area. There are about 150,000 square feet of buildings on the property. Uh, if you noticed over, I believe, winter time, they were demolishing some of the buildings that were really uh, too far gone that added no real value to the property. We've had some conversations with DECD over the past few months regarding the property. They were aware that we had coordinated a feasibility an analysis for the property um, that was done as a part of our market analysis and, and regulatory audit product. And it provided a number of potential scenarios uh, for the redevelopment of the property. Um, some of those included housing for an aging population, high-end residential, hospitality slash recreation, institutional, mixed use, or municipal use. We realize that municipal use is not likely, but that was uh, an option. And I think DECD was impressed that we took the initiative to move forward with this particular study, and they wanted to know how we could forge a partnership. Um, we had some very casual conversations and described what maybe we could offer to them. We believe that we know the community better than they, and that we have experience in marketing and promoting properties. And that caught their attention, and they said, well, maybe we could get you some funding if you're willing to assist us. As I said, it's in their best interest as well as ours. Uh, so the conversations continued for a while, and they do have a program. It's, as you can see in the memo, it's called Connecticut State-Owned and Formerly State-Owned Brownfields Program. It's used to fund remediation, abatement, and demolition activities for brownfield site redevelopment, with other goals including increasing the economic impact of the investment and reactivating long stalled sites and encouraging job creation. That led them to believe that they could grant us $50,000 to help them with the marketing and promotion. Uh, John and I have done this in other communities successfully and we actually have somewhat of a formula that we will describe in more detail actually in the, in the next item 
but they were intrigued by this process. Um, and they did request that we submit some documentation fairly quickly, which we did. Um, we only had roughly a week or a week and a half to do it. And based on that, they submitted uh, paperwork back to us. We're coming to you explaining the program, but also hoping to get your endorsement so that we can move forward um, with the particular grant offering. Just to touch on some of the items um, that we would work with the state on, um, this is not all inclusive, but one of the, the key items is actually getting some signage on the property. We've already had interested parties come to us over the past few months, uh, people that we've known, people that are in the area, and I think signage actually would formalize that the property is up for redevelopment. Uh, we've had some people come and go wondering what's going on. And if you put the signs up and we have an agreement with DECD, I think that um, gives a little bit more confidence and credibility to the redevelopment project. We would develop real estate summary sheets. They're basically information sheets, um, often one page front and back, photos, snapshot descriptions, zoning, probably a brief description over the feasibility analysis, some options on the site. Those sheets would be used to distribute all through New England to prospective developers who would uh, be interested in the property and, and they would make a quick determination from what they see as to whether or not they'd be interested. In essence, we start the marketing with those sheets. Um, we don't start the marketing with an RFP, but we start the marketing with information and we begin forging relationships with prospective architects and developers. We would use the sheets, do a lot of outreach through email to private development teams. We'd also do a lot of advertisements uh, in the New England area, particularly New England Real Estate Journal. We would start to show the property to prospective buyers. We've driven through the property already with some interested parties, but we would be given access to the building so people could walk through and really get a sense for what the opportunity is. Uh, obviously, we're interested in engaging the public. Uh, we want to know what their input is on some prospective development ideas. Uh, a little bit different than opening it up and saying, what do you guys want to see? The way we would stage it is we would indicate, here are some options that were developed in the feasibility analysis. We'd like to know your thoughts. Do you like the idea of senior housing versus maybe hospitality slash recreation? Start to get some of that feedback. People might talk about buffering, no noise, road access, et cetera. Um, there may be some other studies that we have to complete. One of the ideas was a limited access road from the property down to River Road and possibly pedestrian connections up the hillside. Um, and maybe a little bit of selective clearing of some trees so we can increase the water view. We might do some studies on that front. Uh, ultimately, we would develop and work with DECD to, to issue uh, a release an RFP. And it's that RFP that uh, development teams would respond to. But not until we actually get enough interest from uh, particular developers. They also want us to be involved in working on some regulatory amendments uh, for the property in order for it to be uh, redeveloped. Um, we, we've agreed to participate in that. And then lastly, our role would be to help them in selecting a preferred developer, a team and a particular use. So again, they're offering us 50,000 to assist us. Um, it's a large piece of property. We believe it's significant. Um, we've actually had more interest in it than we originally thought we would have. And if we're able to move this forward towards redevelopment, uh, it would actually contribute significantly to our tax base. So that piques our interest. Obviously, the state is ex expending a lot of money on an annual basis for electricity, heating. They want to relinquish that cost. So it's, it's kind of a win-win for both of us. Great. So, yeah, yeah, so any questions? Yeah. Joe? And then all right. Uh, there, there was a, a movement last year to try to the DEP to, to to kind of connect all that land together, and it, it didn't seem like it worked out near the end. But 
is there any movement on that? Because right now it's still broken up in a few pieces, isn't it? It's not not considered one piece of property currently. It actually is still considered one piece of property. It's DEP and DECD both are stewards of different sections of the property. So we've contacted DECD and DEEP to talk about working together moving forward so that some of those other pieces of property, we don't necessarily need to see them developed, but as Paige mentioned, looking at a feasibility analysis of there may be uh, the need for a limited access roadway down to River Road or so some, uh, some selective tree cutting or a pedestrian path because uh, to, let's see, the north of the property, there's also some town-owned open space. So maybe connecting those up to create more amenities on the site so when it actually is used for reuse, it would have an even higher value and more benefit. So I, I think all the right people are working on the same sheet of music at this point in time, yeah. just there hasn't been a commitment yet. And the folks that are contacting you are contacting you because you have it on the site somewhere or are they just approaching you because they heard that the property may be available or where's the, the buzz coming from or just anyway? <laughs> Believe it or not, a lot of the people we deal with are uh, people we've worked with in the past that we maintain contact with. Also, they may come in <coughs> interested in a different project and we're always doing our best to try to pitch Groton. Um, they might be interested in one area. We we'll say, by the way, while you're here, we want to make you aware that <coughs> we've got this other project going on in the future. Do you know anybody who might be interested? Oh, and sometimes they're interested, sometimes they refer others to us. Great. Diane? Um, I love that we're moving forward on this. I think this is great for us. Uh, I do have a two-part question. Uh, what do you think out of all these scenarios would give us the most bang for our buck? In other words, if we pick the um, aging, the housing for aging population, it's not going to put kids in the school as opposed to a residential area. So do you think there's one more valuable than the other? And my second part is, are we going to have a say? In other words, are we just going to put it out there with all these scenarios or we're going to say, look, I do not want a munis another municipality. I would prefer having the, the uh, the aging population resident? I think that it's difficult at this point to evaluate which of these alternatives will be best. It was um, kind of a first cut analysis and without knowing the details we won't really know what the best benefit is to grow. These are more um, general land use possibilities without getting into specifics on what the offering is, what the fiscal impact analysis is for each one, we're not gonna know the best benefit for Groton. Um, on the housing, though, you, you also mentioned um, aging versus Resident high home. end. Keep in mind um, that housing now for millennials which is in high demand. They're not having the children that maybe older generations had. And, and especially with EB's growth, um, I guess I'll, I'll throw out that statistic. We learned something a couple weeks ago, it was pretty interesting. EB has 14,000 jobs today, split between Connecticut and Rhode Island. They're gonna add roughly 4,000. That brings it to 18,000. They anticipate over the next five plus years through attrition and retirement, they will hire 14,000 people. So that, you're gonna see an influx, and that's between Rhode Island and Connecticut again, so let's, let's cut it in half. Let's say it's 7,000 people. They're gonna be younger, millennials. We have to know what their consumer demands are. Housing, shopping, dining, recreating and they're not looking for that large single family home and they're looking to start their families later they're very um, career and community oriented so even if it wasn't senior housing if it was other high-end housing they're probably gonna have a small footprint or a floor plate for each apartment or condo you probably will not have that many children in that type of development I think it's unlikely. 
and when it comes to a municipal use, uh, it was a suggestion in this land use study that here are all the possibilities. And when they were saying a municipal use, they were suggesting that, well, maybe there's something the town could use it for. Our main priority right now is getting this property on the tax roll and seeing it develop exactly. into something that's going to generate taxes for the town. So right now it's giving zero dollars to the town. We want to see the, the development that's the best suited for the area, that's best suited for the town, and that's going to give us maximum value. Uh, you have to look at the context of what's appropriate for the area. I imagine it's going to be some type of a residential or hospitality use that ends up there. But again, we're going to market the property, we're going to get some interest, and we have to see what interested developers want to do. And then we can analyze those proposals with the state, and the property is within the town, so I think we'll have some say in what happens there. So when you market it, you're going to put all these scenarios down when you market it? We have not gotten to that point yet. Um, what we commonly would have done in the past is list some preferred alternatives. Uses. Okay. We've not yet. This is just a study that came out, and um, but we're probably not going to put down municipal. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and no private developer is going to buy it for a municipal use anyway. But I think we're going to have to refine our thinking a little bit and, and put that in our fact sheet or our property listing as to some ideas that we're comfortable with. Because ultimately, we're all going to have to make a decision on, on what we think the future zoning is going to be. So our intended use has to match that zoning. Thank you. Thank you. Bonnie? So um, when you uh, were talking about signs and marketing, where are you planning on putting those? Do you have an idea? We haven't pinpointed a uh, location. We'll probably have uh, a couple signs on the property itself, on the high ground. Um, I don't know if we would put one at the base at River Road. I think that would be a great idea. You think it's a good idea? Yeah, there's tons and tons of okay. people going by River Road. If we could use the town property to do that. But you'd have to say something like, it's not this property, but it's adjacent to this or something like that. Yeah. Don't we get more traffic on Cow Hill? You get them on both. I think you should put it, but you might be able to put it a high sign, and so it's visible <coughs> from 95. Well, whatever we do from marketing signage, we'll kind of look at the property, see what some of our traffic counts are on our roads, and obviously uh, make sure we're putting a sign up that's uh, in accordance with our sign regulations, too, so. Thank you. Do you need to put one on exit If you do put one on River Road, it should be big enough so you can see it from the river, maybe even across the river. But, yeah. Yeah, uh, but it's signed in front of the property because you've got to go down rural school rule to get to the property, so <clears throat> the, you'd have to, if you were thinking put a property in front of the sign, were you talking about literally the property itself or something at the head of where, where oral school meets? On the property. On the property itself. Correct. See, unless anybody goes down that road, nobody would see it. You'd actually have to say, basically, on Cow Hill, by the way, there's property down here in case you guys are interested. In addition to having the signage, there's going, we're going to be putting ads in the New England Real Estate Journal and, and other publications to get the word out. I mean, the sign out in front attracts people that are driving by, yeah. but it's also all the other but it's also an identifier for, oh, here's the property, I've got there. Wait, you know, it's, yeah, it's not looking the primary for, driver of interest, I know. For yeah. something like that, it isn't, yeah. Karen? Um, I just wanted to confirm now, we're getting a grant, if we accept uh, the grant from the state, will we still be in the driver's seat on this, or will the state, you know, we're gonna be doing this marketing and everything. Who's calling the shots? It's, what I want to make sure is that we're doing what's in the best interest of the town, not what's in the state's best interest, because I know their collaboration with some other municipalities hasn't always worked out to the benefit of the municipality. So are we going to be in the driver's seat? Well, I kind of look at it like a spectrum. <clears throat> they could go forward on their own right now and attract any developer that they care to. Mm -hmm. In entering this partnership, we gain more control. Okay. Uh, and they know also that at the end of the day, we're the ones that 
have to deal with the regulatory amendment and the review of the plan. So I view the partnership, they, they're granting a little bit more authority to us. At the end of the day, it is a state asset though. It's, it's their property. I believe they're going to make the final judgment. But they're looking for us to do mu much of the legwork, which I, I think further allows us to protect Groton and to get the development that we desire. I think it puts us in a stronger position. Because right now we have very little input and the state has a lot of excess properties, just like this. So it, not that this isn't a priority to them, but it's not their highest priority. By us entering into this partnership, we are making this a priority so that we can get this on the grand list sooner and to get a use that's compatible with the area. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And no matter what, it still has to go through our planning and zoning process, so we must have some say in it, even if it's a state-owned property. Once it changes hands, once it becomes in, right. comes into private ownership, then yes. Right. Yep. I was going to make a motion to endorse the submittal of the grant application for the Mystic Oral School Brownfields grant valued at $50,000. So <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Alrighty then. We have a motion in several seconds. Harry? Um, I just want to make sure that this is clear in my mind. This is kind of, I've toured this property. I mean, my kids played ball on the fields. It, took, it, it stopped in 2011. I, I know the property very well. Um, but I just want to get this clear. Across the street, there was a fire department interest in making that up some kind of, you remember that, Mark, where uh, training or something across, because it was an old house over there, whatever. Is that part of this property, too? I don't um, Do you know? I, I believe it is. It, it looks that way to me. I mean, it says in there that my understanding is, is the fire department um, has a lease. Okay. Kind of year to year, um, they have made many efforts over the years to try to acquire that piece. Yeah, they had a handout when we took the tour Correct. of the property. Yep. I remember. Yep. But I, I believe it was part of. It's integral to the 55 acres or whatever's left. That's um, why I'm asking the question because I believe it is too. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, it's the road go right in between that and. I mean, there may be a place for that once you know what they want to do. Once you know how you want to develop the rest of the property, but. I, I would hate to, personally I would hate to see that sectioned off just like the DEP pieces were in terms of stewardship without having an overall plan so as far well, as I'm, it, 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 it may or may it wouldn't fit with some of these proposals that might happen no, you know, yeah. know, why would you want to put housing and firemen across the street you know doing what they're doing but and is it a done deal the open space stuff has been split off that's uh, um, no, the, so uh, right now it's still all one parcel. Okay. It's um, held in separate types of stewardship. So DECD controls the land where the buildings are, some of the surrounding land. Yeah, no, I heard you say that. So, and then the DEEP has the other part, is that? Correct. So w what's the approximate numbers of those two parcels? Is it like 50, 70, or? Because um, I, I got, the, in my mind, I have like maybe 30 or 40 percent of it's left and the rest of the open space has kind of been spread off but that's just what I, I, I think you know. I don't know the exact that's figures I, I want to say it's somewhere around those percentages okay that's but good. Uh, that's good. I, I just but I mean, we're, again we're looking to work with deep and DECD to look at some of those areas that were set aside as potential open space and can we have trails through that's there we're working with two departments but that, that that's uh, my thought so I'm in favor of doing Great. what we're doing so thanks we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing then all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 9 to 0 to 0 and brings us to 2016-0184. Sale or lease of town-owned excess property, which I think you were going to um, get everybody up to <coughs> snuff on what's going on, your plan for that, correct? Like uh, details of I'm going to tackle this one at first as well. and. And some of this language is similar to what we just heard in this last item, but um, obviously that was specific to one parcel. We're 
initiating uh, a larger project dealing with numerous excess properties that the town owns. And similar to Mystic Oral School, we envision that this is a real opportunity to grow the grand list, and that's been a priority for the town mm -hmm. for a while. Um, you know, we, we've talked, you know, we have an old economy motto where people think we're gonna attract another big, large employer. Market analysis has hopefully educated us on that, but that's unlikely. We're going to be looking at small to medium-sized business growth. But another opportunity for us to grow the grand list are properties that we already have in our ownership, and, and those should not be overlooked. However, we're going to talk about a process that's a little bit different than what we did in the past. Um, land, municipal land assets should not be treated the same way as a used police cruiser. Um, you don't simply pass it on and throw a quick bid on the street or an RFP and wonder, well, what happened? How come we didn't get the hits, the interest that, that, we, uh, that we needed? I think we read an article with Salem Mass that did a whole story on it. What's going wrong? How come we're not getting the interest when they throw an RFP on the street for 30 days and, want, and nothing happens? Well, the, the reason is that they're not marketing the property. Um, they're simply using a purchasing instrument to try to gain magically some quick interest. And it, it doesn't work that way. So we think it's important to view these properties more as redevelopment projects rather than real estate transactions. Real estate transactions happen all the time. I've had, I've had real estate uh, brokers ask me, why don't you just put it on MLS? Because these are, these are special projects and what we can do is actually do a better job in creating kind of a feeding frenzy of sorts with these properties. We can help guide them through the regulatory process. And it's also important to realize these properties are in, some of them are in some key locations that actually could be catalysts for your economic development. These growth areas that you really, really want to promote, you're in the driver's seat to really entice the right team and the right uses to come to the table and make these things happen. So to only look at them as grand list uh, attributes is probably lesser than the way that we should look at it. We should look at it from a bigger picture standpoint about business, economic development, jobs, how do we revitalize a particular neighborhood. Um, those, those are the ways that I think will benefit us long term. Um, so as I mentioned, the straight RFP process doesn't necessarily leverage your best uses, um, nor the best financial yield to the town. And note, we're talking about not only sale, but also leasing of properties. That won't be common, but I want to mention that that is a possibility. That is something that has been done in other municipalities. I have done it, and it's worked out exceptionally well. I'll give you one example. Uh, we may never encounter it here in Groton, but uh, when I worked for the city of Newport, we did acquire a piece of property from DOT, and we eventually enticed a small brewery to attract, to, to come to the property. Um, and it's uh, Newport Storm Beer and Thomas Two Rum. Small parcel, acre and a half. After 12 years of lease payments, it paid for the property. It's a 100-year lease. So you basically have a triple net, meaning they pay you a monthly lease payment. Also, they'll pay your liability insurance. Um, and they also pay taxes. And so basically after year 12, it paid for the initial investment. Um, your rate of, of uh, return was fairly high. You have 88 years left on the lease, which is basically secondary revenue to the municipality. So I just throw that out. Um, as we deal with properties moving forward, that is an option. It's not one that is commonly used, but it is an option, and we should not always look at 
the simple sale of property. Uh, you might actually find that you get a better financial offering with the lease option. Um, so within the actual memo that was provided, um, we provided a listing of particular options that um, are very similar to what we described with Mystic Education Center. We would propose to use uh, signage at our key properties. Before we start putting signage up though, we do have to identify what our key parcels are for redevelopment. We have a long listing of municipal parcels at this point in time, and we're in the process of prioritizing the ones that we think have the best shot for ease of redevelopment, financial yield to the town, um, those that are in key growth areas for us, take for example, Route 1, Route 12, um, those will actually come to the top, and also the ones that are kind of ready to go. We've heard, for example, that uh, Groton Heights is one that people are eager to see happen. It's an existing building, it's not undeveloped land. Uh, it's in a great location. That is one that we definitely need to push forward and will be at the top of our list. So we'll put signs on those key properties as we discussed before. We'll also uh, create a marketing brochure that we described. I don't think I mentioned um, with Mystic Education Center, there was a copy, I believe in your packet, of the actual brochure. Uh, this, ha this one happened to be for Wickford Elementary which is in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. Uh, we develop one of those for each one of our parcels. We'll conduct public meetings uh, regarding various scenarios and try to gain uh, people's input. We'll show the property. Now, one key point that's important to realize is that how long one markets the property directly translates to how many quality proposals you will receive in the future. As I said, if we put an RFP in the street for 30 days, we're going to get very little. We would actually suggest that we do a marketing for each parcel for about six months. And that involves several steps. That six months does involve the signage, the, the, pro, the brochure we mentioned, the advertisements, the showing of the properties, the emails to various teams. Um, we, we do have a spreadsheet that, that we've held for the past few years we probably have 50 developers that we would send materials to. And if they're not interested, they're gonna tell their friends and other investors that they know about. So word travels fast. So we wanna take advantage of a multi-month <clears throat> period of time when we're marketing these properties. And there's kind, of a, there's kind of a magic moment after you get through this. You don't get too many more phone calls and people know it's on the street. And when they contact you, they start asking, when is that RFP coming out? When's it gonna come out? I'm ready to go. They've already got their architects on board. They, they may have even lined up some builders. They have the financial investors involved. At that point, that's when we know is the right time to issue the RFP. And we would typically issue it for 45 to 60 days, but they already know what's gonna be in it. Because mm -hmm. we might tell them ahead of time, expect this is the type of material that we'll be asking for you. So once we get to that point, it does move fairly quickly. But the marketing over several months is the key part. Um, and, and I know folks are anxious to see some of these properties move because they've been vacant or underutilized for a lot of years. But the last thing we want to do is we're so close to the goal line here. We don't want to rush it and fumble the ball. So if we take very deliberate, clear steps at this point, that's what's going to make it not only just adding it to the grand list, getting good revenue, but getting that great use at the end. So that, that's really one of the key points we're going to focus on. Like I said, about a 45 to 60 day turnaround once the RFP is <coughs> out. And again, we will promote that RFP issuance more than just our website or local advertising. We'll, we'll put it on the street. Uh, we'll use an evaluation process with criteria. The criteria would be established and put in the RFP, and we'll share that information with the council when we're reviewing these proposals. Eventually, we will make a recommendation as to which of these proposals we think is best. There will be some interviews 
with the best teams <coughs> and their uses. You select one as a preferred developer, and there's somewhat of a negotiation that takes place, uh, possibly on use, or maybe you would like more intensity, maybe you would like less intensity, maybe you think their financial offering should be better. Maybe you think that they should do it in two years rather than the proposed three years. So anything that they propose is up for discussion and negotiation, and then ultimately, as you've done in the past, it comes back to you in a regular meeting for uh, an, an official endorsement. And we enter the real estate transaction phase, either purchase and sale or if it happened to be a lease agreement. So that, that pretty much provides the process in a nutshell. We think it's a better process than simply throwing an RFP on the street quickly. We think it'll yield uh, better results in quality and also financial benefit to the town um, and we think that we have the ability to really contribute to the grand list over time and in this year's budget through the CIP the council and the RTM did allocate some funding fifteen thousand dollars for us to begin this process with some of the properties uh, again as Paige said we're going through those properties now trying to create a priority list because we can't say all right we're gonna do these six properties all at once because each one takes a lot of time. We can start getting signs in the ground, but we're gonna focus on you know the top two, three priorities first, roll those out, and then as those are hitting certain stages, we can start getting into some of the next properties. So it, it, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but we think this is the best approach to go on. Dean? A couple of questions. One, uh, I think we've all heard the phrase uh, reuse committee. It's been done sometimes. Somewhere in here, I think there was a, as part of the procedure, there's a, is a soliciting input from the, from the community. It's not just what the town fathers and mothers think is, is best. I think it's only fair if you've got neighbors to ask them what they, uh, what they would like. I think it's just, uh, just being neighborly. The larger question I have, though, is this. So the town owns property, and the town's going to be marketing property. However it does it, with just the straight old RFPs or, or a procedure like this one. So let's say we become more professional about this thing and we want to leverage and maximize. What about the, um, the owner of a piece of property, private owner of a piece of property, that also would like to sell their five acres or 10 acres and would like to see some development on it? Are we not, also, are we not in competition with uh, that private owner before when we were basically just trying to get rid of the property? And we can get rid of it by getting rid of it for a buck, I guess. Uh, you can always get rid of the property. We're, we don't feel like we're in competition with anybody else, but once we engage in this process of, you know, how do we maximize, et cetera, would it be better to say, okay, we, we own some key parcels here. Maybe somebody else also owns some key parcels, not the town, but somebody else. As far as the town's concerned, yeah, we'd like to get rid of property, but I'd like to see the key parcel or the key top, the top three or the top five, whether they're something we own or something they own, and make that happen. Bottom line, if we own something that's really important and we market it, somebody buys that, what about the property across the street that could also have been viable, just has to be privately owned? Have we, are we competing with private developers? Is there a way to coordinate for the, for the greater good? I, I think, one, there are some properties we'll be looking at which might make sense to merge or to be purchased by abutting property owners to have a larger development. In other instances, the market's the market. So if someone today is selling a piece of property, maybe they're asking too much money for it. Maybe they're being unreasonable uh, in what they're looking for. I can't tell you how many times um, in my career, and I'm sure this has happened with Paige, we've had people come in looking for great properties and they want to buy X piece of property. The appraisal says it's worth X. And the family that owns that property says, no, it's not worth X. We think Walmart's going to come here and buy it for 5X, and we're holding out for that. Well then we need to move forward if we have excess properties like Groton Heights, like there's a piece of commercial real estate behind Gabriel's that was at one point in time approved for an office building. There are other commercial pieces of property that the town has retained ownership over due to tax sales, foreclosures, or other things. Today they're not collecting any taxes for us. We need to sell those. We need to see them built upon for the best uses for the site. One of the problems I think we've seen, and this is in the market analysis, is 
we're not seeing a lot of the new investment. So along our Route 1 corridor, no one has done the complete redevelopment option and you know built the multi-story buildings and totally revamped their plaza. Well, we need to help market some of our properties that we have now that might start to show some of that interest and make that happen. So we can either sit around and wait for everybody else to sell their property, which hasn't been working so far, or we can get in the driver's seat, and that's what we're proposing to do here. But do you think you have a situation where, and again, you've probably done the, the, the inventories. For me to buy, I'm interested in the area, I'm interested in certain location, I'm interested in doing something, and that's why I'm interested in your five acres or your whatever it is. But you know, your five acres come with strings. You've got an RFP, I've got to meet your conditions, you've got to like my lender. The family over here that owns five acres isn't imposing any conditions. They're just looking for a price. And you know what? Maybe their price is okay. But I get this one, or maybe I'll pay extra, but I get, I don't have to go through your hoops. I'll do whatever I want over here. Do you envision any scenario like that? Well, now they're really competing with us. It's, it, it's sort of unfair, so to speak, the other way, where they have a leg up because they're not putting any strings on anything. I, I think competition's a great thing. Yeah. Great. Um, how are you going to make this prioritized list? Are we going to get a vote, or, or do you guys develop that on your own? And when do you see that happening and getting this whole process started? The, uh, the priorities? Yeah. I, I think that we would be interested in uh, so the, the properties and how we prioritize them. Yeah, you talked about, you know, we have a lot. We're going to get a prioritized list, attack one or two at the top. When's that going to happen? How's it going to happen? Well, we're actually beginning that process now. We're getting data from the finance department of a lot of properties. At the same time, we're developing criteria for trying to create more of a short list. I, I think um, it's not going to necessarily be an overly scientific method. I think it's going to involve what we know you desire, Groton Heights. We all know that's a, that's a top one that people want to focus on. It's also going to involve maybe what we can find out regarding uh, size of property. As I mentioned, if it's an area that we think will pique people's interest, that'll probably rise to the top as well. Or if it's something that's going to take forever, it's got a lot of constraints, that might fall more to the bottom. Um, so I think we're going to develop this listing internal. Where it goes from there, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, we'd be happy to take that to the council because we need your buy-in in this. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you're going to be the one saying, yes, we want to sell X property to X preferred developer. So once we create this priority top five, you know, eight list of properties and say, all right, these are the three we think we can work on over the next, you know, six months to one year, we'd be happy to bring that to you to get your buy-in so that you're supporting what it is we're doing. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe you could put together the list of the top ones. I think there's, we own a lot of properties, so I don't know if you're going to put them all on there, but the ones that you're first looking at and send them to all of us and let us do like we did with the charter revision and just rank them. And we could summarize uh, unofficially what we think. Joe? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think that list is going to be driven by people interested in property anyhow. I think uh, you're going to get people who are looking at Mystic River and thinking, wow, that's a great opportunity, as, say, as well as the, the, the Fort Grizzle property. Um, I, I'm excited because I think this is, and I, I, I am the guy that kept saying, throw a sign on it, throw a sign on it, because after seven or eight years, it's like, okay, let's do, let's do something. But I do like the approach you're taking. I think that you, you should create some kind of buzz about the property. Uh, I'm excited about it. I can actually kind of maybe sell schools on it now because I think people want to see that movement. They want to see the ability to get rid of schools. And I think that's it's a difficult thing to do when a town owns a property. Uh, but, but when someone comes up and you market it, right, and they, offer, they, they come up with a good plan, I think we're going to be able to easily say, I think this council will, uh, speaking for myself, but I think we'd all say, go ahead and sell it if someone came up and said there was a good plan, like maybe condos at the at Eastern Point. But that's going to all be driven by the market. I think that list is going to get get in, a, in order quickly for you guys by, by the phone calls you receive. So, And as I mentioned earlier, um, we need... Well, I didn't mention this, but we need to do a better job putting Groton on the map. 
yes, we're the submarine capital of the world, we have Pfizer, we have EB. To some degree, even the market analysis stated, we need more exposure. When we met with the future developer at the Sealy School, that has led to some other things. Um, maybe by luck or, or maybe just opportunity. We were at the same time meeting with the Wyndham Hotel Group, who has, of course, all kinds of uh, low, medium, high-end brands. And both of them have been talking as well. And we're looking at other properties in the area. And then they have friends, they have investors. And it tends to create more and more interest. And while they're here, we tell them about things like Mystic Education Center. And it just starts to snowball. And I think we're starting to put Groton on the map. And the more projects we do, even municipal projects, it just gets more exposure and it benefits the community. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I wasn't asking to bring it to the council. I think you guys probably have the most expertise to decide what's the best interest, you know, what properties have the most potential. Um, I was just concerned that, you know, we get that list figured out and start moving forward. I did, I uh, had a couple of things. Um, I applaud the effort. Um, I've seen this brochure before, I think seven or eight months ago. And so you're giving, I understand there's counselors here who haven't seen the presentation, but what's happened in the eight months, I'm sure there's been some movement, it sounds like there has been, but to me, you know, I, I, I always worry. Well, I, I think my perception is that things move slowly. Um, and so I, I'm, a couple of things I'm wondering. One of my guilty pleasures <laughs> is million dollar listing on some TV network. And what you guys were saying was what those guys do, what Bonnie does, right? You market properties. You're, you have, you want to get your, you want to get it out there, you want to, but you're not marketers, right? Your, your job in the town is not a marketer. So why wouldn't you contract out to people who do this? And it costs us nothing, and they only get paid if it sells, and you can do other things that you need. You know, you're kind of connecting with them, but you're, you're doing other things while they're doing the, he the heavy work. And uh, maybe they move quicker because they don't have a whole municipality to deal with. So that's, that's can you, well, that's one of my questions. So actually, I think part of Paige's job actually is marketing. So okay. not, not to be cute, but the other <laughs> difference is that um, I respect realtors. I think they do a good job in what they do. We're not looking to just sell the property. We're looking to figure out what is the best use for mm -hmm. the property. So, uh, I mean, a, a lot of times I think a realtor is looking to sell the property and we've sold some town properties. They've gotten approval for things and there's not a shovel on the ground yet. So some of those strings that you were bringing up, I think some of those strings are important because if we sell a piece of property, getting it on the grand list, yeah, that's important. But if it's on the grand list for $200,000, it's something. But if it sits there vacant, and is only collecting minimal taxes over time, as opposed to going through this more in-depth process, putting reverter clauses in there that if you're not gonna meet these milestones within X amount of time, we get the property back because we have a whole slew of development teams that want to redevelop this property into something that's gonna help create that sense of place. So a theme you're gonna see in that market analysis is Groton needs a sense of place. We're looking to not just sell the property, but to see it redeveloped into something that's going to make Groton mm -hmm. a better place. I mean, it makes sense, but are you telling me that there's 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 only um, sellers, you know, who just sell? They don't do what you're suggesting you can do. Like, if, if I mean, can't can't you get help doing that and, and tell the the um, realtor? or whatever the business is, because it might not be a realtor, you know, to say, we don't want to just sell it. We want you, I mean, you know, not consultant, but, you know, there's, there's got to, I mean, there's got to be some, in, there's got to be somebody who has this business idea that they can help municipalities not just sell a building, but really develop, do what you're talking about. And, and, and I'm not, 
before you answer, I'm not trying to take away your job. I'm just, you were here eight months ago with the same brochure. And we, again, my perception is that it's eight months and you're right, we're hot on Groton Heights, but it, it's so structured that you want to get a, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, we want to make things happen, not, not just keep oh, talking oh, about it. It, it just, it just is, it's brutal. Go ahead. I actually have several answers. I'm going to try to condense it. <laughs> All right. um, I, one thing that you actually mentioned that I totally agree with, uh, I've been in this business for 25 years, and development is probably the most interesting part of what I do. And someday when I exit government, I will do exactly that, and that's consulting for these types of projects because no, dis no disrespect, I've worked with some great realtors, but I've seen many who don't perform as well. And I think there is a need for that intermediary. And there's a huge difference between a real estate transaction, which is broker driven and commission driven, quick, and the real estate development project. And um, that's the best way I can actually mm -hmm. kind of describe it because we're invested in seeing the project occur. I've seen plenty of properties that have been purchased and nothing happens with them. Will you get a couple pennies on your grand list? Sure. If you wanted to do a quick sale, you could, but you're not going to get a development project. Uh, it requires a lot of negotiation. It takes buy-in from the council. Um, you have to know what it is you desire, like we're discussing with Mystic Oil School. Um, someone will buy that, probably sit on it for 20 years. You want a development there. You want activity. You want something that's really going to contribute to your community. The other benefit that we have is we handle the regulatory end of it. So as we're dealing with prospective developers, we can try to answer their questions along the way. Whereas someone who's working for commission, they're just looking for that money. And once they close, they're, they're out of the picture. I think we have a larger vested interest at play than simply having property tran uh, trade hands. So I, I think it's a different process. Clearly ours takes a little bit more time. But I do believe, as John said, my, my job is marketing. Mm -hmm. My job is promotion. And it's not just a one-off. It's not just a quick sale. If it is, you're not going to attain the goals that you truly desire. So from a, from a time frame perspective, when do you think we can see the first brochures and have, and have things starting going? When do you anticipate that you're... I being? think a brochure like that, once we identify... Let's pick Groton Heights because I think that's one that will rise to the top. We get a brochure like that in, in, in a month, two months tops, given that it's summertime. But um, I have a staff person, my community development planner, um, who will be working on that, as well as Lauren, uh, our part-time clerk, um, who have the capabilities to develop the language and also make it look like it needs to be. So I'm guessing one to two months for that particular property. It doesn't take that long. Getting a sign in the ground, same period of time. Our largest challenge right now was getting um, some of the funding to support our efforts, which thankfully we received 15000 but also we've got the money coming in from the state. Uh, because it does take some money to do these things. You, you have to spend a little to get a lot. Uh, so that was our first hurdle. Second hurdle is we got to prioritize the pro properties because there's a long list right now. And I think if we knew these are the top three priorities, then we could really zone in and target on those. So that, that is an internal challenge that we have to work through at the moment. But once we have a property that we know we're going to work on, it's six months max before we actually issue that RFP, and we also have development teams in the picture by that time. Um, so it doesn't take that long, and actually I would argue sometimes that's quicker than hiring a commercial broker who's got gazillion properties. We're looking to reach out to all of New England, and sometimes the brokers are not doing that. 
Uh, I would just ask, I'm gonna, I'll let you go in a second when I'm done. I just, I'm wondering if we can get a, a, a timeline from you. If we could in the next two weeks have some kind of something laid out that's gonna tell us, we're, you know, and we're not gonna hold you to every day, but I'd like to get an idea of what we're looking at for time frame, Bonnie. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing because we're gonna see you in two weeks for the presentation. Maybe you could have some of your top priorities at that time. Well, one of the challenges, uh, as Paige said, we have a few properties right now, but we've just been trying to get a list from finance, and they've been dealing with the budget. Uh, I certainly don't like to make excuses. This is a priority for us. Uh, for a number of months, we were, Paige only had uh, one full-time staff person because our economic development specialist had left. We were trying to wrap up the market analysis, which we're done with now. So there are some other priorities that we're ADC. juggling. The airport development zone, which will be submitted to the state sometime in the next couple of weeks. That's something that the town's been <coughs> talking about for a number of years, so we're wrapping that up. So there are a lot of other priorities uh, that we're juggling. During the budget process, I remember, you know, uh, Mayor, you had asked, well, is this all you need for funding? And I said, well, no, in an ideal world, I'd probably have another staff person to help with a lot of the economic development efforts we're doing because knowing the time intensity on this. And to answer the other question, you know, Paige's future career of doing this type of work, often developers are the ones that are saying, let me find great property, let me take it through the approval process, and then I'm gonna sell it to the hotel, the residential developer, the apartment developer. I mean, we both know a lot of developers, and their job, they don't wanna build anything. They just wanna take it from raw land to what we're proposing to do, at least get it marketed for proposed uses. So. Jim? Yeah. Does it make sense at this point to, to take those properties and, and do the list and have us go down as a council and, and approve that we actually want to sell them? Because I think what happened when I first got on, th there was already plans to, to like, say, the Noah Garden, for, for instance. That was already kind of a done deal. So if you were on a council previously, you made this agreement, so now we could we could go away. The next council could be, say, they want a garden at, at Eastern at uh, Grand Heights. Now that's the possibility, but but if if we voted now to sell it as a council and, and we put something in motion, a new council would have to stop that motion, and then and then uh, say, okay, now we want it to be something different than for sale. Does it make sense that a council who's so on board right now that we would kind of package this kind of stuff together and say, okay, no, we do want to sell this or we don't want to sell it. But to let it go, to let something go between two councils or even three councils sometimes, priorities change, maybe maybe EB hires the extra people and maybe times get a little bit better and we can start going away from development again when well, I think, you know, long term we have to develop all these properties. So does it does that make sense to because right now you're gonna right now you don't even know if we want to sell it. I think you got the overwhelming feeling from these nine people that you probably want to sell the Grand Heights just but there could be a new council in a year and a half that says, no, man, we, we never wanted to sell that. Our intention was to, to, not, to not to be anything, or to be a museum or, or whatever. So does it make sense at this point, or is that putting the car before the horse? Or? No, I, I think before we start marketing properties, we want to make sure that the ones we're marketing are ones that the town wants to sell. In some instances, I believe the council has voted to sell some of these properties. And those are on our list. What we're trying to do when we say we're trying to look at all the town properties, there's a, um, a number of properties that the town has acquired over the years through tax sale, other types of foreclosures, some parcels that maybe we've bought from the state that we can lease out. We're trying to get a, a, a comprehensive list to say what's on the table, what are the opportunities and options that we have, and then from there, what rises to the top. But Yes, I, I think we want your buy-in. We don't want to pick the top five properties and then to have all of you say, no, those are our lowest five. We wanted this to be number one. So is, it, is this, sorry, Mary, but are there some property, you said some are slated for sale and were voted on by, by a count previous council. Is that, is like, is Groton Heights one of them? Or do you know, if, is there a list, a list of 10, and are there two or three that's, that they've already been kind of voted on and, and said that they want to be sold? That's, that's all part of the research that we need to do is okay. compiling that list look at what actions have been done what's the zoning what's the size location buildings etc and then that criteria that Paige was talking about before we can look at that and say all right well 
Here are 10 properties that we know the council either has taken action in the past to sell this, or it's something that we didn't buy it for open space. We're not looking to you know sell recreation land or open space land. It's other things outside of that. Okay. Deb? And then Harry. Um, I'm kind of disagreeing because I don't I don't want us to micromanage you. I would like to give you a little bit of freedom to figure out what the best thing is for the town. Because I certainly don't know in my heart of hearts if I would be able to pick the right top three. I don't know. That's where you guys come in. So I mean granted, yeah, I appreciate the fact that you could bring it for us and say, yeah, you know, these are the top three or these are the top five, but I don't want to get into a situation where, you know, the council is all of a sudden, let's vote on this because we want to force this through, you know, a bunch of other town councilors that aren't here. I would like to think anybody who sits in our seats is going to support any kind of economic development that comes through. That's why we choose to do what we do. With this is all volunteer work that we do here, and I don't see why these guys would make any bad choices that we couldn't support moving forward. And I don't want to put another step to slow this process down because we have all come to a conclusion things take a long time to move and to put a whole nother step to say okay wait a minute let's make sure that the town council's on board and we get the right vote and we get the right motion and we move all of this forward who knows I could add a whole nother month on top of something so I just want to make sure that we're not micromanaging what they're doing yes keep us in the loop as far as what kind of list you want to put forward and what kind of brochure you're going to put out, but I, I want to be careful moving forward as to what we're really, you know, stamping or having to stamp to make things move forward. I just want to be careful with that. Harry, Is yeah, you're, you're, going to, you're going to hit hurdles with all these too. There's going to be deed restrictions. There's going to be zoning issues. I mean, the the priorities are going to have to be made, you know, one through five or whatever. But some are going to be more difficult than others because. I mean, you, you can't put a Burger King on a residential lot, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, and and that's, those, that's what we're going through with William Sealy, too, I, I think is part of the process. And that adds time to the whole thing. I would like to see the ones up at the top that are, that don't have the deed restrictions or, or as many zone, or easier zoning issues. I mean, for instance, Rotten Heights has got city zoning that we have to deal with, no ink school had no ink zone that we had to deal with. Yeah. And the schools might have, you know, a deed restriction saying it's got to be an education facility or recreational use like we have across the street here. So um, just, just comments, that's all. Dean? Yeah. Um, I think the question when we're talking about whether something ought to come before the council uh, or not to speed up the process, we're, we're missing something, and that is this they would be operating under the presumption that all this property is for sale under some method at some point. And I'm not saying that I have a property in mind. I really don't. But it is possible, just like it's a possibility, I suppose, that the oral school could be, needed, could be used municipally, even though we can't imagine why at this point. But it's always a possibility that a particular parcel might be more valuable. We may make the choice that even though it could go on the tax rolls, that we have a very good public use in mind for it, and we would like to pass on that first. I'm not, not to bollocks up the works or anything like that. But otherwise, what happens is they put together a list, the whole thing is, is the whole thing, the properties are marketed one by one, hopefully if all, all goes well, everything is disposed of. We might have missed an opportunity to hold back an acre for something that we think has a because we do that all the time. The town already owns public property. They own this property. We have schools. And we have properties, frankly, that could be performing economically, but don't. They're called parks. We choose to keep those off the tax rolls on purpose. So I'm just saying there could be an opportunity there somewhere. I think that's why we should have a look before something is sold. It, and also, when we go through our list, one of the things that we want to look at are do any of these pieces make sense for us to keep for parks, rec, or for other town purposes? So that's something that's in our equation also. Um, okay. And, and one other quick point, uh, Mayor, I want to make, yes, we did make a very similar presentation to the last town council. And I know some time has gone by, but I'm very happy that we came back tonight because we're getting some very 
good feedback from some similar council members, but a lot of new council members. So this is very beneficial to us. These are going to be very big decisions that will impact neighborhoods and communities, and we don't want to go into it haphazardly. We need your buy-in. Thank you. Paige? Go ahead, Diane, and then Joe, if you have something quick. Yeah. Just real quick, I personally am happy that you guys are involved and nobody outside because I'm going to call you back in a couple of weeks and say, okay, how are we doing? What's gotten done? What signs have been hung up? Because it is going too slow. And I think you're feeling the frustrations that we're feeling that we would like you to get going on these properties. Thank you. Paige, do you have something you want to say? I'm certainly not an expert in Connecticut uh, municipal law. I will say one of the things I was familiar with in Rhode Island, um, clearly we're having a conversation about the disposition of publicly owned property. And we're just talking about process tonight. But at some point, as you deal with one particular parcel and you move into more detailed discussions, you would not necessarily want the public to know every detail and facet. So. Um, I just throw that out there. I didn't mention it in my description, but as you move into more sensitive information, I don't know what they call it in Connecticut, but uh, they would. Uh, I'm familiar with it being called an executive session. So it's a, it's a closed exactly door meeting. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, you post disposition of publicly owned property, and we would talk about a strategy moving forward. So. Whatever's done, uh, I imagine in the future, that type of meeting would be needed. Let's just say we recommended um, that property number three be something we really, really go after. Why? Because we think it can make $10 million. I don't know that we want to start talking about numbers um, so that the public can hear it because that's going to influence yeah, I think your, we your told ultimate them. negotiating. We, 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 um had that history and that's exactly what happened so Joe did you want to yeah I just want to, I want to say uh, as far as that, that's to, to my point even what Harry was saying was you know we, we could have this list of property and then the reason I want to vote first and get it out there and open so because we're gonna have a bunch of neighbors for every single school for their reason coming forth why they don't want it to be this or that that's just a natural progression of selling property in a town so and you have some 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 residents who want development, some who don't. So all that can be vetted out ahead of time, like before you start. I mean, I mean we can walk and chew gum at the same time. So so this all could be happening. Say if right now we said we voted tonight, and so well you know in the next council meeting we're going to say that we do want to sell Eastern Point. Well, there's going to be a lot of people that come into Eastern from the Eastern Point area, or not Eastern Point the. Fort Griswold area, they're going to say, well, it should never be this, it should be a museum. Sorry. That should be vetted, kind of. And that's where you could do that ahead of time for free, I think. So I don't know if, um, I, I just think put, putting it up for sale without without us knowing if we want to sell it or not. I know what I want to do with most of this property. I can tell you in advance, but what the rest of the town is going to want to do, I don't know. So. Harry? Yeah, we got something later on our agenda tonight talking about that Heights. And uh, I, uh, I, I, for one, am curious to wait, um, curious might want to wait because, I mean, the property might be more marketable one way than the other way. So um, I just put that out there. I don't know if you're aware of the fact that we're going to talk about a possible land swap at Rotten Heights here a little bit later. So, so I'm going to information. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so we're not. For any action tonight. Okay. Well, I'd be interested in knowing which way is more valuable. Okay. On a closing note, I just know how hard it was for us to pick a submarine. <laughs> okay? I just don't want to get stuck in the conversation of them coming to us with nine and us having to say, oh, this is our favorite because it was very apparent we all liked a different submarine too. Yeah. So that's the only thing that I'm saying. When it comes to this decision moving forward, I just don't want it to become like the submarine conversation and which one we were going to pick. I just don't want to see that happen with the properties. That's all that I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So, right. But if if we are going to go forward like mm -hmm. we did with William Seeley School, we do have to approve the sale right. of each I mean, building, I, right? I, I'm okay. kind of trying to stay quiet here. Um, if there's going to be disagreement about what properties we want to sell or not sell and for what, 
it's better off to get that resolved up front, mm -hmm. not after you got a live fish on the end of the hook. And these guys have spent six months, nine months courting a developer and so forth, and then have it come out, well, that's not what we want. I don't believe the list is very long. Um, there may be a lot of properties out there that aren't specifically for recreation or whatever, but in terms of significant properties that have some significant development potential, from my experience, and, and it's going to be a relatively small list. Um, or you're going to have very hard, you're going to have very strong feelings about selling off properties. I, I, I think the intent of this is, um, I mean, we've, I have to be careful how I say, I mean, first of all, we had a neighborhood group for Groton Heights. There's already a report, there's already a recommendation. We've talked and that we keep beating this to death. We've held off moving that forward, primarily for market conditions and because we also got a brownfield grant that we're about ready to conclude or the consultant's about ready, that will make the property more um, marketable because it will identify issues and, and issue, issues that a future developer needs to know about. Um, the fact that we can hand them a document that talks about what's in the building, what remediation has been done, what needs to be done, I think that's adding value to the property ultimately. Um, so I, I think in part though we're going down this process because one of the things we've heard loud and clear and it keeps coming up and I think there's a, I believe there's misinformation but this constant, well what are we going to do with these future schools? We've gotten rid of a lot of schools. Uh, but we keep beating ourselves up that we have all these schools and I'm, I'm trying to think, I mean there was a conscious decision made to hold on to knowing. I, I don't know why we keep, whether or not everybody agreed or not, but that was the decision that ultimately was made. There was a neighborhood group task force involved. The only school we've, you know, and Colonel Ledger, uh, you know, the city expressed interest. They more recently maybe expressed, maybe they don't want to go ahead with that, but I don't have any more information from the city on that. Eastern Point, we were able to have reused as, a, as another school. We have a brand new high school over there. And we've said, at least up until now, we want to hold on to Fish Middle. So, you know, we're really, we're talking about Groton Heights, and I think we're in a much better position now to market that properly. The environment, it, people want to see the building stay. They don't want to see it go away. They want to see the structure reused. And it is in a residential zone. There's been, at least conceptually, an idea of how to deal with the zoning to basically mirror what the town has done for the reuse of industrial uh, and institutional uses. But in part, some of the comments that we've received are, what are we going to, if, you know, if the school facility project is approved, what are we going to do with all these schools? And, and that may be part of the, the, the pro some of the properties that John and Paige are talking about. But that's four, five, six years, even you know, if we're successful, and hopefully we are in November, um, by the time the new schools go built, which means these schools can be vacated, we're four or five plus years down the road. Um, so I, I, I think it, personally, I would like to see the council at least see the list and weigh in. We can't market, I don't think it's going to be a large, there may be slivers of land here and there, but I, I don't think there's going to be too many Groton Heights on it, to be honest with, in terms of significant development potential. So, um, Greg, and then Bonnie, and then because we do have a two person, a two speaking okay. limit, so we're kind of one above it, but if they make it short, and so that'll be short. Yeah, I think their process definitely has to start after we decide we want to sell something. That just makes common sense. I mean, we've voted on some of these tax foreclosure properties that, you know, we've looked at them, there's no town use. We voted on those that we want to sell them. I think that's the process. Then you guys get them, prioritize the list and go forward. It, it seems like that's the process we've had. I'm not quite sure why we'd be straying from that. Bonnie? I just wanted to say when I said we could put a, a, our vote on it, I didn't mean that we pick like we were doing the summary. We could each put one through whatever it is and give it to them and they could take that information as a collective thought process on you know, what if we all said Groton Heights was number one? I mean, it, it just give them some more data. 
Okay. Diane? I don't know how this list of property got segued into the empty schools with a school project. I just know that I'm asked all the time what is going to happen with those empty schools if the school project goes through, but I don't even know why that was brought up. I only brought it up because it's the process that we're talking. I think it's a good process that Paige and John are laying out. That's the reason why I brought it up, because I think this is this could serve us very well. And, and except for really William Seeley, there has been a neighborhood process. William Seeley, I mean, it was the council that you know, wanted to move ahead with that. And um, even though we were using it, and it's not a criticism, but there was criticism afterwards, like, well, why didn't we follow a neighborhood task force process and certainly the mayor has spent many hours in one particular task group and others from the council in the past spent a lot of time on Broughton Heights and, and years and years ago we had a similar process for um, uh, Mystic Academy where we tried to engage the neighborhood um, and in most cases there has been consensus it, it I mean knowing was a little different um, but I, I think what we ended up with was what the majority of folks was looking for. It may have not been what the council, what was a new council at the time, um, was looking for in, in terms of some members wanting just to sell property. Um, but that's the only reason I raised it, Diane, because I think it's the process um, that, that hopefully will serve us well in the future. Okay. Go. Is it proper to make a referral now? I'd like to figure out what we're doing with Colonel Ledger. Uh, you know, let's. I don't know what we need to do to get that on the table to, to get that well, into their hands. Or, we, have, or we, if we should probably talk about it. We could put it as a, as a referral and discuss it, right? Separately. So, great. We're going to move on. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Are you staying? No. North Stonington Road Bridge? No, that's thank not you. your department. <laughs> no. That'd be Gary, right? We are not on our list. Maybe we just fill them up. We're going to look at 2016-0179 in North Stonington Road Bridge. I think this is on the agenda. We have Gary here to discuss. We have to speed on this bridge. I think that we've heard from Stonington and from the Old Mystic Fire Chief. The Old Mystic Fire Chief is desperately seeking the bridge to be restored. And, um, I think Mark looked into Stonington and can't find yeah, I mean, anybody in the budget yet. This is only, as the mayor noted, this is only on the agenda because we did receive a letter a couple weeks ago um, from Conway Londrigan, who our counsel for the, Myst the old Mystic Fire District. I, I think either the letter contains some misinformation or there's a misunderstanding. Um, th this and I wanted Gary to be here to kind of take us through where we are. Um, we have briefed the council in the past um, uh, because, as, you know, at this point, we are proceeding with design work. There was not money approved in this last year's budget, but we do have uh, money available as a result of the initial project in which we got reimbursed from the contract from the design engineer. So I think there's a total of approximately Ninety thousand dollars, Gary, plus or minus. It's, it's minus because we had to pay for this preliminary study, okay. so it's a little bit north of seventy-five, well, eighty. Well, why don't I stop there and you kind of take us through where where we are? Uh, I think the council has the letter here, and I'll just jump up right back down to the uh, to the bottom line, and that's in bolts. Uh, the Public Works Department is taking the lead on this. Stonington has let the Public Works Department of the Town of Groton take the lead on this, as we had done with the uh, with the other attempt to get the bridge designed and, and be built. We've been notified by the state that uh, they are, uh, uh, they by the end of July, end of this month, the approved local bridge funding program will be published by the state. Uh, and what that will do is uh, they will prioritize the bridges in the state of Connecticut, match it to the funding that's available that they have, and then make the awards of the grant. If the, this bridge is granted an award by the local bridge program, the reimbursement rate would be about 48%. Total cost of the bridge that's being proposed out there that we looked at is a $1.2 million structure. That's the uh, item that was placed in the capital improvement program. <coughs> so for right now, we've done enough work to submit for the local bridge program, which we have. The local bridge uh, uh, people up at DOT have been, uh, have been talking to the, to our, the town engineer, our town engineer, on, on the application. 
and we are waiting for their um, for their award or their their award if, if if we get it awarded. If it's awarded, as Mark had said, we we have money in escrow about seventy five eighty thousand dollars from the last a settlement from the other engineering firm that will carry us through the preliminary design enough to get a good number of what each town should place in its in its CIP projects, uh, CIP budgets for the next fiscal year. I did provide a schedule in my package here, which dovetails real nicely into the approval process for next year. Even though Stonington, we've contacted Stonington, even though the first selectmen and uh, public works uh, people over there said that the Board of Finance could take this up and fund their portion of it, they have not approved any funds right now. But uh, Stony could, could, could move and get the funding done. The uh, question really is, is to twofold, is one is that, uh, and this is what we briefed the council on at the budget thing, we don't need any funds right now uh, to carry this on. If there is a local bridge grant, uh, I would recommend to the council that we proceed in using the money that we have, that's Stonington's money and our money, to prepare the preliminary design, to uh, get the cost estimates down and on, <coughs> onto what we could bring back to both the town council and the first selectman in Stonington. And then the question comes, do we want to fund that that type of, uh, type of infrastructure. The, uh, and I did note it in my memo here, is the, uh, uh, the letter from, from the old mystics attorneys did have the picture of the violation as in front of the general store. Uh, the truck on the right is parked in, a no, in front of a no parking sign, in front of a hydrant, and a painted yellow curb. Uh, some enforcement out here maybe uh, of, of help in the near term. Uh, to keep traffic from flowing through that area. So uh, just wanted to update to the council right now. We did check back with the state later, uh, earlier this week, and they have not made a, and they have not made a determination of the local bridge grant awards for this year. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Has, has a determination been made by both Groton and Stonington that this is a bridge that we all agree needs to be replaced. I mean, I thought at one point the question was, do we even want to do this? So I guess I'm a little unsure as to why we're moving ahead in funding design or any of that if, if ultimately we're going to say, look, we don't need this bridge. We're not going to spend the money. Uh, for it, so we're just going to barricade it off, and it's going to stay the way it is. I, I, at least I can talk about the design work, and maybe Mark can talk about uh, uh, the policy decisions. Right now, we've used uh, my authorization to uh, the town council was to move forward to get you know what should we replace, what could be, what would be the replacement for that bridge? Something very simple, or something very detailed. We hired an engineer and took a look at it, and $1.2, $1.3 million is what the type of replacement for that structure. Whether it is needed or not, the old Mystic Fire Company for years have said they need this because it is their fire station is across the way. They need to respond in the most direct uh, direction, the shortest distance to the structures on the side of the town of Groton. The structures in that area, there is no public water in that area. Uh, there is public water on the Stonington side, but if you, once you cross that brook, there is no public water in that area, so they can't hook up to a hydrant. So I can talk about uh, bringing it up to this design where the uh, town council and the board of selectmen can make a decision whether they like to fund this, this type of structure, whether it be at $1.2 million divided by two or $600,000 divided by two. But we're getting enough facts and information that, so uh, both uh, policymakers can make a decision. I don't know, Mark, is there anything else? Yeah, I think initially um, when, when we realized this bridge needed some work, I think generally the feeling was on the part of the council, and I assume the RTM was, you know, if we could put it back together for fifty to a hundred thousand dollars for each community, it's pro and get I don't know ten years, fifteen years on, it's probably worth doing. I, I think when it became known that the cost is a lot more. I don't know what the answer is to you. It's a great question, but how, I don't know how people can address that question until you really know what the costs are. And I think, you know, I think we've, we've, um, we're trying to use the available money as cautiously as possible. And when we became aware that there may be some state or federal funding, which Gary men made mention of uh, in terms of uh, 
an application that would provide maybe close to 50 percent, 40, 50 percent of the funding. I, I think that's a discussion the town council probably needs to have with the board of selectmen. I, I guess when I got this letter and. It, I, you know, I, I was a little perturbed at the second to the last paragraph is, you, you know, it, it's noting that Stonington is committed mm -hmm. um, to the replacement of the bridge, but it wasn't budgeted. We essentially have done all of the administrative work for the, for the last couple of years on this. Gary, St Gary and, and Greg Hanover and other members of his staff. Um, and so, yes, we put the money in the budget and it was cut out um, through the budget process. The comments that I heard were not so much, we don't want to replace the bridge. It was more kind of kicking the can down the road. You have this other money. You're not really, are you going to be able to build it this year? Um, and the answer was, no, we're not going to be able to build it this year because we still have to do the final engineering and so forth. But I think ultimately that's the question that needs to be asked. Is it, is it something that, you know, were, were we desirable to replace it if we could have done it for $100,000 split two ways, you know, with us in Stonington? I think the answer was yes. Mm -hmm. At $1.2 million or some other number yet to be further refined, I don't know what the answer is going to be to that. Um, but I, I, I just find it, like I guess I, I, this letter deserves a response of some type. And before we put a response together, I, I wanted to have a discussion with the council because I, you know, at least we put the money in the budget. Um, and if people listen to the, some of the discussion, it may be wishful thinking on, on my mind, but I think it was really more it was cut out because the money was not specifically needed for next year. There were other things that needed to happen or could happen. It would have been nice to have the money approved. Um, but we, uh, you know, unless you tell us to pull back or somebody tells us to pull back and stop the engineering work, I, I, I interpreted that we still wanted to go ahead and at least get this application in, at least know are we going to get some significant help from the state. Um, Gary, you may have mentioned, when, when do we think we would hear back from the state on the, in, in uh, time for next year's budget process? Their goal is to make the awards by the end of this July. Oh, actually make the awards. Make, make okay. the awards okay. that, that they will have a list of bridges that are eligible based on their funding, and then there's a whole application process starting. So. Okay. If they come out with that, then the next phase would be doing the, the design work. And we have money all the way through the preliminary design, maybe 50, 60 percent. We have the money available in escrow, and then that will give us then those, those detailed cost estimates. Right now, they're very broad brush. It's about $1.2 million. But what would be looked at a little harder is the permitting issues, although we have a pretty good handle on those. So what we, we would be doing is refining those numbers to go back. And that would be in time for it to be placed into the, for the CIP budget for the for Groton. And so for maybe when we hear from the state, hopefully by the end of July, one way or the other, you know, we would come back to you, brief you, and maybe that would be a good time to have a discussion uh, with Stonington. We, we used to have occasional meetings with the selectmen. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Stonington, we haven't done that in a while, um, and uh, because I we did when I had heard or when we had heard that, you know, Stonington it, it was ready to go. Gary and his staff called over there, and no, it was not put in anybody's budget. The fact that the finance committee could approve it mid-year is no different than what the council and the RTM can do, and and maybe the the fire district doesn't know that, but. Um, they probably <coughs> Dean? Was it Cal who's counsel for the town of Stonington? I was going to say that the town of Stonington didn't get the same letter, but as you correctly mm -hmm. pointed out, they, the letter to us points out that Stonington's ready to go. I wonder if this letter to Stonington says Groton's ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. Sooner or later, this is going to come up in front of us. I mean, once everything is, is uh, it's going to come up in front of us as an immediate, hey, do we want to spend our half of, one, say, $1.2 million, at which point we will come back to where we normally go which is, do we really want to spend this kind of money? We're looking to save money because, as we said before, there's never such a, no such thing as a fat year, which will raise the question of, is the bridge necessary? Public safety is paramount. And so we're going to ask that question. Is the bridge necessary for public safety? And I don't know that it matters. Suppose, <coughs> think of it, suppose the bridge was never there and the fire district had said, 
boy, wouldn't it be neat if there was a bridge there? That's essentially what we've got here. We're trying to, it just so happens that we're trying to put a bridge back where there was. So we're gonna run into this question again. I read this letter, so I don't wanna say any more about this. I read this letter and I'm thinking, boy, I know what, I know what Brian is doing. Brian's laying the groundwork for something here. I would take this letter, I would throw it to our lawyer and not say another word. Harry? I kind of, I, I kind of agree with you, Dean. I, mean, uh, I mean, it's CC to most people, but it's not CC to the police in Stonington, and there's obviously traffic violations causing the blocking of the corner, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have a question for Gary, though. You said we have the money in escrow to do this. Is we, us, and Stonington? It's ours It's and not just we, Groton. That is correct. That's, that's the impression I got, so okay, thank That's you. correct. It's, it's our money, both Stonington and Groton went and did the, uh, put in 50% for the design <coughs> and the construction of the quick fix that didn't work. So we kept the money, they know it, they yeah. let us keep it, it's an escrow at the town attorney's office. Okay. Yeah, what's funny about it is anytime there's a hot button issue and you would think a bridge missing was something that you've had for a long time, would draw like, you know, 20 people would be here tonight or 30 people because they need this bridge so bad. I did, I did speak to the fire department down there and, and he thinks he needs it. Uh, and it may be just for the fire department because it doesn't seem like, there may be one or two letters we may be getting from citizens, but it doesn't seem like it's this overwhelming problem from, yeah, yeah you, you probably got a couple too, but it's not, it's not a, it's not like the when we did the sign thing, there were 60 people here, yeah. you know? So it's not that hot button issue that people are, it, so it doesn't make me think that it's this, this urgent need, but the fire, the fire department felt like they needed it. But again, if it's people just blocking traffic because they're parking wrong, then, then maybe that gets addressed and, and that solves it too. Diane? I just wanna make sure I get this right. So you're estimating 1.2 million for the bridge. Correct. If the state ponies up 48%, we're looking at approximately 600,000. At that point, you're gonna to come to us and ask for 300 and 300 from Stonington, is that right? Well, uh, what Mark has, has recommended is that once we get the award letter, I'm being positive from the state that we come back here and have that discussion, because I will need to spend some money out of the escrow to, do, to proceed with the design work and the permitting work. And then we'll nail down at 1.2 million. Is it 1.2? Is it one? Is it, you know, what, whatever number it gets nailed down, the number gets refined. And then to me, my recommendation is it gets placed in the, the CIP or the town council can make a supplemental appropriation. I guess my question is in, in that last part of the 600,000, what happens if Stonington says we don't have our half? We don't do the project. There, there has to be agreements or money put up or, or something. Okay. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't go for it unless the money, as they did in the first portion, they did put up their funding and uh, we could tap into it. So, but those would have to be some sort of formal agreement, I would think. Thank you. I, I recall the, the discussions we've had in the past that there's a debate that we don't need the bridge. That if we, if it was, you're right, it came down to money to a certain extent, but at $1.2 million, you know, there was a consensus that we didn't need the bridge. And the old, the old Mystic Fire Department is saying that we do. Is, is there somebody we can turn to who can look at it and tell us whether or not that bridge is essential for safety? One of the things that, that I mentioned is in that area of town is that uh, there is no public water on our side of that brook. But for Brook, and there was some email from the old Mystic Fire Chief, is that the issue is if the bridge wasn't built, then they would have to lay hose and close roads down, which probably makes sense. They have to come from the Stonington side. But again, I'm not a firefighter, so one of my questions would be is that if firefighting requires, we should have public water, and that area doesn't have public water, can we entice a quarry in to run a main, to run their main across the brook? or tie into the, uh, the water main that's on Cow Hill and Route 84 to, cre to create a loop. Is there something more that could be done with this money that would benefit everyone in that area, not only with public water, but also with firefighting, firefly firefighting flows? But again, I'm not a, a fireman. I, I don't drive that equipment or anything else, so, but those would be some of the other issues to look at. You know, would that be at a cheaper substitute and have a better benefits, have I more mean, benefits? I mean, speaking of for myself, if it's it's hard to understand whether there's a public safety issue, and if, if the powers that be, whoever those powers are, say that 
you, there's a serious safety issue by not having that bridge done. I'm inclined to have the bridge done, but you know, I, I understand that the old Mystic Fire Chief is saying that we do need it, but we've heard from others that we don't. So, Dean, I'm, I'm sorry, Karen. Um, it seems to me that the the concern is more about the congestion uh, at the intersection of Main Street and Route 27, and the hazards. It, the the turning radius um, is not sufficient. So um, definitely, Stonington's going to have to be more vigilant about um, keeping the, the illegal parking under control there. But. Route 27 is a state road, and I'm wondering if there isn't also s something we could do about talking to the state about increasing the turning radius at that intersection, um, you know, widening the road, something like that short of, you know, building a bridge. It seems to me um, that that maybe could be an option to look at, too. Great. So the contentious is we're going to wait and you're going to come back. End of July, beginning. And can we see if Stonington can be here for that? We can certainly invite them. I think it would be great to have the, the first selectman in selectman here. Thank you, Gary. That brings us to uh, 2016 0 Groton Heights School, Bill Memorial Library land swap. And there's a, a picture in the packet of the both properties kind of have an L, and there was a um, talk in the past of of swapping so that they were perfect rectangles on each side, and um, Mark put it on the agenda so that because there's yeah, been we, some. We had recent. I had recently received an excerpt from the Bill Memorial uh, Library Board um, Board of Directors meeting. I, I do want to note I am a member of the uh, Board of Directors of Bill Memorial. I was not at that meeting, so I don't have any firsthand knowledge of what specifically was said uh, at the meeting. But Janet Downs, who is the secretary for the, uh, for the committee, did send me an excerpt of the minutes. Quite a few, well, four or five years ago, um, we did approach the, uh, the library about did they want to do a land swap? And so uh, if you could all go to attachment six, this map, it's, it's a little busy. I apologize for that. But first and foremost, if you went to the town's GIS system, the outline of the land that is associated with the school <coughs> and the outline of the land that is associated with Bill Memorial is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Um, and it's something that we're attempting to get corrected. So right now, the, the property lines uh, for the, those two properties, Fort Griswold is in the green box, um, basically the monument and the restrooms. The yellow dash line is the configuration of the school property. Now if you look, if you went to GIS, it would include all of that yellow plus the blue. The blue, though, belongs to Bill Memorial Library, um, and it's enclosed in the, the red dash line. So the red dash line is the property boundary for the, the library, and the yellow uh, is the uh, Groton Heights School uh, property. The blue area is a portion of the Bill Memorial Library, which the library graciously leased to the Board of Ed for many, many years. Um, and, and we've known that. I mean, that, that is not news. We've known that forever, or I've known that at least forever. Um, but it is not actually owned by the town of Groton. Even though it looks like it's part of the school, there have been school improved swing sets and so <coughs> forth have been built on it. It's been part of the playground that was associated with the school. When we went to the Bill Memorial Library uh, a number of years ago to talk about a potential swap, and the swap was um, to uh, get rid of or to trade, uh, to, to give them basically the front, what we would most of us perceive to be the front yard mm -hmm. of the school, that narrow strip that goes out to Monument Street, which would be right adjacent to the library would give them a nice rectangular piece of property and in exchange for that 
uh, we would hold on to the blue area. At the time, they were not interested. Uh, this, this was at, probably at least five years ago, maybe longer. That was not something they were interested. It sounded to me, or my recollection is, is that previous to that discussion, there had been some thought possibly of maybe building some housing on that blue area, maybe some affordable or elderly housing or something like that. I never saw any plans, but that, uh, that, that's what I recall. And I, I should know, in the middle of all this is a paper street known as Library Street, which is owned by the town of Groton. Uh, so it just is a <coughs> complicating factor. What a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Right. Um, uh, but it, it, there's not a road there. It is, if you've ever been to the Bill Memorial Library and you've parked in their parking lot off the road, their access drive is within the right of way of the, uh, of the, of the school, of the library street right of way. So at this, and for the last couple meetings, or at least the last two meetings, including the last one that I was not at, there has been some discussion of, well, maybe, you know, maybe we should, this is the board, uh, say maybe we should approach the town, maybe that would be a good thing uh, to swap land. Um, I'm not really sure what's the genesis of that. Um, when we had approached them previously, um, the, the thought was that the front what is the front lawn to the school may be of value to them for future expansion. This was around the time, approximately the time when the uh, community foundation was making available $100,000 grants to all the local libraries and the bill was looking at potentially building a community room. Um, uh, either within their existing footprint or outside of the existing footprint but for whatever reason they were not interested they are now um, I, I, they are talking about possibly future expansion they have no definite plans but I, I think there's been some rethinking that this may be a good thing I think they've picked up the town's interest to sell the property and so I, I wanted to bring this to you simply for information tonight I did not invite anybody in from the bill board because I, I wanted the council to have the opportunity to kind of think about it. I don't know how many of you are that familiar with the property. I think it does need to be, as was talked about in, a pre, in our earlier discussion, something that we need to have planning evaluate. Um, it's nice to have a front yard uh, to the Groton Heights, but it really, that's not where people are gonna park. It's not probably where people are going to uh, walk into the prop maybe visitors will there's nothing suggesting that we couldn't possibly reserve a right-of-way for pedestrian access to the building even if we uh, switch property with the bill memorial I do think the blue area ultimately probably has more utility for the town depending on the reuse of, of the school um, it, it, it's uh, um, I think if there was an expansion put onto the building or some freestanding units built, you'd probably want to do it there, not in the front lawn uh, of, of uh, what is the front lawn to the school now. Um, so it's really just for information purposes. I mean, if you have strong feelings, absolutely not or absolutely yes, that would be great to know. But I wasn't looking for that. I just wanted to give you a heads up um, that we have recently received a communication from the so it looks like the blue area is a lot smaller in like square footage than the thing. Were they entertaining an even swap, or would there be some monetary? I, I don't. I, I think at this point they were looking um, as an even swap, but I don't. I, and none of the maps that they have. This was something that Public Works put together quite a few years ago. Clearly shows the the uh, the uh, library street. Uh, uh, I mean, I think that's a very legitimate concern, and, and maybe you still keep a swath of land to Monument Street, um, and you try to um, do it as a, on a square footage. I haven't measured it, so well, and, and, and this it, is only a schematic. If you do it straight down, it it's getting awful close to the building. You don't have much of a setback. If you cut this right like that. Yeah, I mean, we could leave a little bit more front yard. Yeah. Yeah. Say, yeah, I mean, we could do something like that. I, I, just have a quick, I, I just have a quick question. So if this land swap goes through, 
it sounds like to me that they're going to get this narrow piece and we're going to just continue using the land that we're getting as we've been using it for years? Well, the lease was with the Board of Ed. We technically don't have access to the property now. In fact, an issue came up uh, this weekend with parking. Uh, somebody was out there parking on the Groton Heights school property in this area, and it got the attention of the Bill Memorial, somebody on the Bill Memorial staff or board. Um, so we don't, the lease isn't with us. It was with the Board of Ed. As far as oh, I'm okay. concerned, it's expired. But if the improved, they, there's still a fence up, it's still fenced off. Uh, there had, they have expressed maybe some interest in getting the fence down, um, at least between the long finger of land going out to Monument Street and the library because of the, the fence was probably put, uh, was put up when it was a school to keep school children from running across their yard probably. Um, but it's an eyesore, it's an old fence, it collects leaves, we get inquiries every fall about when are we going to come out and get not from the bill but from the neighbors in the area because you have two fences that you know right close to each other 50 feet, 50 feet apart or so that just collect all the leaves from the, from the uh, that are blowing around I would just be curious to see what whatever planning says because it's hard it's hard for us to look at it and make but I, I agree with you Bonnie if you if you did cut that straight back there would be you know it'd be like a four foot sidewalk behind the the property or something if they ever put a fence there that'd be tough yeah so i i think the plan is probably going to be the best best route greg yeah with the plans to sell this property i think that it's best in their hands to you know, at least make a recommendation on what they think would be the best way to market yeah. that property and maybe you let the commercial folks decide you know the best uh, way forward Dean. are we aware off the top of our heads collectively are we of any deed restrictions with respect to this property uh, pro there are not the restrictions that would prohibit us from selling okay so we, it's so that that strip in front of the school is all ours we can dispose of it as, as far as from the review that we did probably six seven years ago um, the property was acquired for the purposes of building a school we built the school that doesn't mean it has to be used as a school, according to the town attorney, forever. So, I mean, it was, I think that's where sometimes people kind of, oh, well, we bought the property for a school. Well, yes, we did, we, you know, but it wasn't given to us for only a school to be there forever. Um, and so, the, yeah, my other question had to do with, right, it's if the swap would have to be considered in the context of the value of, of, the, of the school were we to sell it in other words do we is do, by doing the swap do we render it less you know access to, to monument or does it render the property less valuable or more valuable well i think that's what to the value that's. is in the future use and i think that's why we need to look at it i mean it, right. it's nice to have that front lawn it would be nice to make sure that there isn't a three-story building built there because the value of those if they're residential units is the view it's the unbelievable yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just absolutely un really unbelievable crazy. but I I, I think mm -hmm. uh, you know that doesn't mean you can't put restrictions on what the bill they're not going to be building a three-story building no, which, which does you, you get an easement yeah so you, you have get some type of visual we, we easement. get a permanent easement yeah. Yeah. preserving the view Harry yeah my, my two of my boys went to the school and uh, and that was just always talked about that that lease property because that was a playground that's where the kids just went and played and I'm sure that lease has gone away because the Board of Ed, not using the, well, it's our, our property. We're not paying a lease, so it's gone back. And that's where we were going to put the subsail. Um, well, and I think in part maybe that that's why some members of the bill uh, changed their mind because they were very much, or certain members of the board were very much against that. And that may have, you know, we, we were looking to put as a potential location the sale of the USS Groton on that finger of land. Um, still think it's a great location personally. I, I still do I mean I was on the site but committee with you that's what we recommended as our it first choice an uproar in the neighborhood in some quarters and the Bill Memorial board was not in favor at all and we had somebody from deep come down she wasn't in favor I, I, you know, I think it's pretty short-sighted um, but I'm not sure we want to open up that room again it was I went by there the day of the fireworks there was somebody 
standing in the driveway into Groton Heights, and they were selling parking places yeah, for I, ten we, bucks a piece. We, we've got pictures oh. of that. Yeah. Okay, so I went right by there because I. I took we we it. used to, and, and it's it's created a fair amount of confusion. I mean, years ago, That's we awesome. the town used to uh, make parking available there but i believe it was only the paved parking area and it it was the, our police to support some of you may recall the marine maritime academy that we ran in the summer we haven't run that in the last four there's or five only about years. 12 spots here it, that's all that i think that's all that we uh, rented out um this parking the pictures that i have goes all the way down to the Yeah, somebody area. made some big bucks parking cars in there. Um, Who was it? It wasn't me. <laughs> I, I don't remember the name of the group. I have it. I, I was just thought of it. Shyster. So, um, well, you start Shyster. anybody have any other questions on that? We'll move on. There's no committee referral items as for the town council referral list. Go to other business. Um, I just want to ask Mark, you've been in touch with the two police chiefs, Mark, and trying to get a meeting together about the dispatch? No, I have not. There is, uh, I did meet with the mayor of the city, and we did discuss um, having some kind of meeting, and we haven't figured it all out yet. Okay. So. I, um, had some emails back and forth with Bruce McDermott from the RTM and I told him I would bring up um, the possibility of town council looking at some kind of limit to our spending for the um, school referendum so that's something that they're looking for from us but they also wanted to propose maybe a once a month meeting between the mayor and some floor leader or some of the members of the RTM I think they've yeah, reached out to you about that. So yep. just wanted to bring that up. I think it's a good idea. Sure. Um, I actually got an email mark from someone uh, asking about River Road. I think I put you tagged you in on yep. the email. Yep. Is that something that's in the? Uh, I, I've uh, sent an email to Gary. I, I didn't hear back from him this afternoon, or I haven't seen his response. I don't believe it's on any future year list, but okay. I, I wanted to check. And, then for and I think. I think he responded to your email basically saying, I, Hey, I got the impression he's already checked with public works. Okay. It's not on a few, but I'll, I'm going to be with Garrett well, tomorrow. So question? They want someone who's asking about Paving River Road and saying mm -hmm. it's in pretty bad shape uh -huh. down along the river. What we're talking about with the Mystic property. And, and he, was just, he thought maybe it was on the, I thought maybe it was on the to do list. Uh, but when I get an answer from Gary, I'll, I'll email you. And then the other one you probably know was a Diane. Uh, the, the Pearl Street property with the sidewalk and the wall we approved the money last year and I think just to give you a heads up I think they plan on neighbors plan on coming in about August 2nd that's the next time they can just to kind of address what's going on with it but I think there was it cost more than they thought it was going to so it's one of these ongoing issues and you'll you'll see you'll you'll hear about it soon I guess yeah I, I mean this is this is Ferguson's property the uh, the house with all the gingerbread and, and all the beautiful yeah. Um, there's a sidewalk there. We had um, primarily through Public Works been communicating with her. It's a sidewalk that's way above the grade 30, of the road, yeah. um, 18, 24 inches. And um, there are probably old curb stones that now look like a retaining wall, or had looked like a retaining wall. Um, and she, uh, she's been great to, to work with over the years. We, we've got a project approved, but the project was predicated that we would be able to receive grading rights from her. Um, and because in, you, you gotta find grade somewhere. Um, you either gotta raise the road, uh, which would be fairly expensive, or you need to be able to grade into her property. And, and we had, the project had been put together um, you know, with the thought that whatever grading rights you would need, they would grant. They, for whatever reason, have changed their mind. They don't want to issue, uh, provide us grading rights. I believe the last email I saw for her from her was that that she is. Um, I'm trying to make sure I say this right. That. I believe she's fine without the sidewalk. It's the neighbors that want the sidewalk. Um, and so I don't know if they're going to come in or not, but okay. it, I haven't. Well, I've been out of town for the last couple of weeks, so I don't. Um, 
Uh, I don't have an update on that. But the project initially working hand in hand with Mrs. Ferguson um, to, to come up with a design and so forth. But I think something changed possibly somewhere. Well, it collapsed. It collapsed. Well, it's collapsed before, yeah. too. That's yeah. not, that's just a recent, that's why we wanted to, re yeah. to do something because we, that wall we've had issues with in the past. Um, and um, yes, there was a portion that collapsed because a truck backed into it um, uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, or whatever. Is, it, is this Pearl Street? Pearl, Pearl Street, Street yes. in Knowing. Got you. Right at the corner there. Yep. Um, What's the history of the road? Did they dig that? Because it looks like it was high at one point and then they just dug it down. You know, probably I mean, the, the sidewalk is exactly. high. The, 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 probably the sidewalk I don't, we don't know how the site, I mean, it wasn't put in by the town. It, it was probably the property owner put it in a hundred and something years ago. And chances are the road was probably dirt. So when the road got paved, you know, there was some geometric standards applied. It's still not great, but it probably got lowered at that point. We have an old picture. I believe we got it from Mrs. Ferguson and, and the sidewalk certainly was not way up in the air. Um, I mean, it's, it's a good, a good step right. <laughs> uh, to get up on it. Um, so I believe where we are is we're still talking to Mrs. Ferguson and her husband uh, about some alternatives. I think I had sent you an email or any, part of an email uh, or an email that I got from someone from Gary about the latest update. I'll double check. Okay. So if I didn't do that, I apologize. But we're, we, we haven't given up on it. But um, I think she's okay with what was agreed to it's the neighbors that are and she doesn't really want to get in the middle of it, and i don't blame her yeah great real quickly yeah we spoke a while ago about bringing thomas road back up about what our plans are for that you know that the plans have stalled for the the bikeway i'd like to bring that back up so because it is dangerous it's in bad shape there's people that walk down there i drive it all the time we can certainly do that based on the discussion that we had at budget time. Um, mm -hmm. We're proceeding with the project, um, trying to get acquire the easements from the Ackleys, uh, which all, who own the golf course property. We've had a couple of good uh, discussions with both Cal and Bob Ackley, um, and have drafted some easements uh, documents for them. We don't need to acquire their land; we need an easement both a temporary construction easement and a permanent easement for the multi-purpose path. Uh, we're getting a lot of pressure from the state uh, and from the COG uh, to either move the project forward or they're gonna pull the funding. We've met with DOT around them three, four weeks ago to update them. Um, you know, we're not there yet. Um, I did uh, have a conversation with one of the athletes this afternoon about something else, um, another piece of property in town. Uh, but we did talk about that and he reiterated, um, you know, I think we're in agreement on most aspects of the compensation. Like we, it, unfortunately we're just not dealing, no, I don't mean unfortunately, we're, not, we're just not dealing with two property owners. There's, I believe he mentioned 12 property owners involved. So uh, both uh, Cal Ackley and Bob Ackley have had to deal with other family members uh, to uh, <coughs> kind of tee this up so that it gets approved in a timely manner. But we can certainly put it back on the next agenda if you want a further update. But we are, I took the, you know, when we broached this at budget time that, you know, maybe we, given all the problems that we've, we're having uh, and the, given the poor condition of the road, maybe we ought to pull the plug on the project and take the town money that we've put aside for this, pro the match, and repave the road. I took our previous conversations to be, nobody was really interested in doing that, that you didn't want us to give up the ghost at this point, so. Well, it depends on how long it's gonna take, because, you know, it's, it's in bad shape, and. Okay, well, I then I, right. so you're not so much advocating get the sidewalk in, you're advocating make a decision and right. the road needs to well, I don't know how long we've been talking this this project, this project has been around decades, decades. yeah decades. so I mean it's over 15 years. <laughs> decades uh, I just know there's people that try to walk in the road at night and and let's either try to you know pave it widen it maybe a little bit to give them a, a, a path to get off shoulder. the road 
Well, I, you know, I'll do whatever the council wants. I, I think we've made some great progress with the Ackleys. We still have the adjacent property owner to deal with, but we've been told that, um, or it's been suggested to us, however the Ackleys go, that's how they'll go. So that's worth basically focusing. They supposedly use the same attorney and whatever. That may or may not be the case based on some comments that we got from the Ackleys. So we're, our primary focus right now is to nail down the easements we re we staked it quite a while ago so that they could visually see where the easements are uh, as part of the uh, as I mentioned we need a maintenance we need a construction easement and a permanent easement uh, there is some compensation for the land there will be a new netting new a net installed along the road <clears throat> to keep golf balls on their side uh, but all that landscaping all the all the large evergreen trees have to come down and that's been a concern of theirs and they probably the most important thing is they now have a new operator of the golf course that just is starting up this year so they're very sensitive about interrupting his operation uh, we think we can work around that um, and actually uh, they had asked that we prepare a letter that we can get to the operator of the golf course for him to sign off on which we will be doing so i'm, I'm hopeful right. um, because if if we can't move this thing forward we're going to lose the money um, okay we move we adjourn second, second.